I'm not very picky when it comes to cadence or anything, but when you're on one by and really pushing it, which is not very often for me, I usually don't have any problem with the gaps on the 11 to 42, but from time to time, I have to admit, I kind of miss the 12 tooth cog. So I know what you're thinking. Just put a double chain ring on there and problem solved. Hey. But where's the fun in that? So let's experiment a bit and let's leave the one by discussion for another video. So the plan is to take this uh, mountain bike dinner plate cassette 11 to 42 and this road cassette 11 to 28 and combine them and see if we can fill in some gaps. Obviously that means we will have that gap on another part of the cassette but always fun to experiment a bit so let's see how it goes. So the 11 to 42 cassette as you can see has double tooth jumps at the low end 11 13 15 17 19 and the 28 is 11 12 13 14 15 and then 17 and the plan here is to take that 12 tooth cog over to the bigger cassette it's important to note though that uh, shimano actually specifically state that you should never mix cogs with different model numbers so this is on your own risk but just to make sure i'm just checking the second cog and the third cog that they actually are the same with which they seem to be so i'm gonna take the risk here as you can see we can't really mix the clusters if you take the second row cluster and put it on the mountain bike cassette you see you have a big gap so that's not possible so i will still keep the two big call clusters from the mountain bike cassette clusters do you call them clusters oh well you you know what i'm talking about right so moving on to the smaller cogs We'll take the 11 tooth cog from the mountain bike cassette and then the second 12 tooth cog from the road cassette. After that, however, the third cog from the mountain bike cassette is a 15 tooth cog. So instead of that, we'll use the third cog from the road cassette, which is a 13 tooth cog, as we don't want to lose that gear ratio. After that, though, we take that previous mentioned 15 tooth third cog from the mountain bike cassette and use that as our fourth cog in our new Frankenstein cassette. So now we basically have my ideal low end ratio done, which is 11, 12, 13, 15 tooth cogs. So for the last cog, uh, we can either use the 17 tooth cog or the 19 tooth cog. But here is where the, the gap will appear because the next cog in the gear cluster is 21. So we will have a pretty big gap in the smack in the middle of the cassette, which obviously is not ideal. That's why Shimano originally spaced the gear this way. But uh, yeah, this is an experiment, so we'll see what happens. I will go with the 17 tooth cog. So I will have a gap from 17 to 21, which is quite a gap. Uh, ideal here would be an 18 tooth cog as that would mean a pretty even jump from 15 to 18 to 21 compared to 15 to 17 to 21. I looked through the spreads on the different Shimano cassettes and they don't seem to have that 18 tooth cog as a single cog. If you found one, feel free to correct me in the comments. I do know that for example, you can get third party single cog from Wolf Tooth Components. So that's one option. We'll see if it's needed or not though. For now, I will try to give this a go. I have a feeling it would be quite a big jump as it's in the middle of the cassette, probably around the time when you climb some like four to 5% climbs. I'm probably gonna feel this. But as I said, it's an experiment. This is not the solution to end all complaints about big gaps on one by. If you're a cadence maniac, you shouldn't be on one by in the first place. But again, that's another video, I think so. Then we just need to put on our Frankenstein cassette on our wheel again. Put the wheel back in the bike. So without doing any adjustments to the shifting, it seems to shift without any problems. It might actually be a tiny bit lag around the cog we just switched out, but I'll have to 
confirm this out on the road, I think. It could be that the actual shift ramps on the cogs are different between road and, and mountain bike. I didn't actually compare that, so it seems to shift fine. So I guess there's not any major problem. So let's head out for the spin and see how this works. Up at the top of the mountain right now at 1200 meters climbing up here I didn't really have any problem with the gaps or anything how cool is this though yeah I have to say I'm surprised uh, I thought I would find that gap from 17 to 21 more inconvenient than I did I said I would be around that gear when I climbed 5% climbs and that was that was wishful thinking for sure. <laughs> if I'm riding 5% I'm probably going above 21 so that was not a real issue. So when I'm around that 17, 15, 17, even 21, that's more of a cruising gear. I'm kind of satisfied. Obvious, obviously if you're really picky about your cadence it's definitely not an ideal jump because you can definitely feel it for sure. I was going to put a cadence sensor and show you some actual numbers that didn't work out. My cadence sensor that I haven't used for two and a half years or something didn't work at all. So instead I'm just going to put um, I'm just going to use a gear ratio cal cal calculator, cal calculator to show you the theoretical cadence at the given speed. I'll put that on the screen and I will also link to this uh, calculator website if you want to figure out what's what's going to work work for you. The 12 tooth though is pretty awesome I gotta say. If I'm on the 12 and 11 tooth I'm probably pushing it pretty hard so having that smaller gap is definitely an improvement. Yeah about that shift lag there was some um, there was some lag at those cogs almost a quarter crank turn lag so I wonder if if it's the, the shift ramps are a bit different or it could also be that the cassette is worn because that's a the road cassette is an old cassette I had for a couple of years I think so that could be a reason also I could imagine that the shift ramps has something to do with as well but yeah I would probably not race on this damn birds not birds flies and obviously if you don't climb up in these kinds of mountains having a 1242 probably doesn't make sense in the first place but so you can have a bit tighter range so in conclusion I will probably uh, use this cassette setup for a while at least and I might actually get that 18 tooth cog from wolf tooth and see if that works out I think it will be a pretty optimal optimal range for for the kind of riding I do obviously this is very personal again I'm not saying this is the optimal solution for everyone but interesting that you actually could use the cogs from different cassettes to make your own at least that's what I think I don't know about you but if you have any questions let me know in the comments below uh, I will also chuck some links to cassettes and, and stuff like that if you found it interesting Subscribe, leave a like, maybe, if you want to. Always appreciate it. You know, you know that stuff. I'll catch you in the next one. Now we just have a pretty sweet descent. So, peace. Doom!